As promised, here are my bold predictions for 2024. And I wanted to start out by first thanking you so much for all of your referrals, all of your support, all of your uh, positive vibes that you've sent our way this year. Our local market has actually been down about 25%. And when I say down, I'm talking the number of sales in the year is actually 25% less than last year. But our team was actually up over 8% over last year. So we beat out the market by over 31%, actually just under 32% compared to the regular market. And we could not have done that without you. And again, we're looking at the number of sales and we always judge our business based on the number of families we get to help. So we are so thrilled that we are able to help over 100 families this year with their moves, both here in the area and moving out of the area as well. We love referring our clients to great people in the destinations they're going to. We also help renters and we help people that are landlords. So if you know of someone who needs help along those lines, let us know. So in order to talk about our predictions for this next year, I first want to start out and let you know where we're kind of ending uh, this year and where we have been in the past. So before filming this video, I did some quick research on where we've been. And the last time we had this small number of homes selling in the area, the last time we had a number that was this low or lower was in 2015. So since 2016, every single year we've had more sales than we did this year. So in 2007, uh, the peak exactly, the peak was in 2021 where we had 8,546 homes sell by the end of November of that year. Then in 2022, the number went down almost 2,000. We had 2,000 fewer sales in 2022. However, we didn't feel that there was any difference. So in 2022, January through November, there were 6,815 sales that occurred in that year. And this year so far, we've had just under 2,000 difference. So the difference is different, um, about 2,000 a year fewer since 2021, which was the peak. But the ratio, uh, because this year there's a smaller number of homes selling, it just seems like it's a lot fewer. But this year, as of November, 5,123 homes have sold in the area. Values have increased steadily. So in 2021, when we had 8,500 homes selling, the average price was $380,000 for a home in the Fredericksburg area. Last year, 2022, it was 426,000. And this year it is 440,000. So values have gone up $60,000 over the last three years or two years, basically. Uh, so with the number of sales uh, going down, the inventory is going down, which means the supply is going down. But because demand is still steady, if not growing, the values of properties are increasing. Values of properties follow the strict supply and demand rule. So if there's a lot of homes on the market and not a lot of demand, the values are gonna go down and the reverse, the values are going to go up. Or if we have pretty steady inventory and steady demand or the demand and the inventory change based on a very similar ratio, that's when we see values that are pretty stagnant. So we've seen a good growth um, in values of homes. So when you hear the real estate market is down, that is not in your value. That is in the number of sales that have occurred. Interest rates. To put things into perspective, so the last time we had a number of homes smaller than this was 2015. In 2016, the interest rate was just under, in January 2016, was just under 4%. And we basically stuck between 4 and 4.5% 4 all the way up until 2021. And then in 2021, January 2021, is where we saw the lowest interest rates, and that was 2.65. So in 
Now you all have heard we will never see that again. Uh, then in 2022, it went to 3.22. And then 2023, in January of this year, it was 6.48. So it doubled in a year. And that is what caused the sting, was the fact that the interest rates increased so fast, such a short period of time, that it really caused a sting. And everyone is looking at interest rates relative to the interest rate that they had before. So when interest rates were at 2.65, and then two years later, they're there at 6.48, people think, oh my gosh, it's awful. Well, just this year in October, we hit our peak of 8% interest rates. And right now, as the filming of this video last uh, week before Christmas, the interest rates were down right around six and a half and people are going nuts. They think it's fabulous. So it's all relative to what the previous interest rate was. So that's where we have been over the last few years. So you can see things have been kind of odd over the last three years. If we just kept going on a steady pace since 2015, we would be right where we are right now. However, the COVID environment, 2016 is when we saw the increase in activity and buyer demand and inventory. Um, that's when everything really started hitting the peak in 2021. So where are we going to go? Well, I think there's a lot of pent up demand. And here are some stats I want to share with you. So in uh, this um, most recent time in the last few years, there have been 7 million babies born, 3 million marriages, 1.5 million divorces, 7 million people have turned age 65 or more. There have been 4 million deaths, 4 million new jobs, 50 million job switches. So all of those examples are examples of when people tend to move. They have another baby, they need a bigger home. They get a divorce, they sell the family home and they buy uh, separate homes. People over 65 looking to downsize or move closer to family. Deaths, um, unfortunately, several of my sales this year have been with the adult children of a deceased parent. New jobs and job switches. So far, people are able to kind of maintain that hybrid model where they could live at the beach, but they're working remotely. But over time, some of those things are going to start to change and people are going to be moving. And when do I think that's going to happen? I think that's going to happen when we hit the sweet spot. And the sweet spot is when interest rates get to be right around 6%. So when interest rates are right around 6%, that's when we'll start to see some homeowners be able to rationalize, hey, I am, I never really liked this house, but my interest rate's been awesome. But now I can rationalize buying what I actually want or moving to the location I actually need to move to or moving closer to the office because I'm back to commuting again. So 6% is the sweet spot because that's where people are going to be able to rationalize uh, making a move. 6% is also the average interest rate that we've had over decades. My first mortgage was at 6%. I thought it was fabulous. I know a lot of people talk about, hey, my first mortgage was 17%. But for most first-time homebuyers, that's not really relevant because they've been hearing about interest rates at 2%. Uh, but 6% was my first, and that is a sweet spot. I was very excited about that. So when we see interest rates get back to that, that's when people are going to start to offer their homes for sale and more buyers will be out in the market at the same time. Our inventory is still too small. So one bit of data I looked at was population or population increase. So um, in the state of Virginia, since 2016, so that was the last time we had sales at this rate, um, we have gained over 200,000 citizens in the state of Virginia, but our housing has only gone up um, by 15, um, 150,000. So we're not building enough inventory to keep up with the population increase. So what that's going to lead to is we're still going to have a lower inventory market. And so what that means is with supply increase, so supply is increasing, but still not enough to satisfy the demand 
that is going to be created um, when we get to that 6% interest rate, even higher demand, we're still going to have a low inventory environment. And so your property values will continue to increase. Now, they're not going to increase like crazy, but they're going to increase at a normal rate that is driven by supply and demand, which is a natural economic force. What do I predict for this next year? Well, I predict that we're going to have a really strong spring market that's going to begin in January. I have already have a number of folks, some of you are listening to this today, a number of folks, we're putting your home on the market in January. And I already know there's a lot of new applications out there for mortgages, um, a lot of pre-qualification phone calls. Now that the interest rates have come back down a little bit, a lot of people are going to be moving and buying a house this next year. So we'll see a very, very strong spring market. It's going to start in January. Now, the weather has an impact on that in our area. So if we have a really crappy winter and it's like really snowy, it might slow it down a little bit. Um, but I believe our spring market will begin in January. We typically see a slowdown beginning in July in our area. And a lot of that is because our local schools begin in mid-August. So families who are moving and want their kids to be enrolled in school, they need to be committed basically by the end of June uh, in order to close and move in and register and get to school. So we typically see a slowdown in July, but my thought is this year, we're not gonna see the slowdown as much. Now, a couple things that are gonna be tugging at the market in our area is our typical slowdowns in July, where August is typically the slowest month of the year. August is actually slower than December and November and January. August is our slowest month of the year, but we're also getting into a presidential election. And I don't know about you, but if anyone were to predict with very good accu accuracy what the flavor of the uh, news media and what's going to be on the ads and on television and all of these things concerning the presidential campaign, it's probably not going to be the most enjoyable experience. And that really does play with people's emotions and people's consumer confidence. And that absolutely 100% has an impact on whether or not people are selling their homes or buying homes. In the end, it doesn't matter who is elected because the day after the election, things start to get back to normal, but it does play with people's emotions and their thought process. So though we may have a very strong third quarter, my concern is the other thing tugging at that is gonna be the contentious presidential uh, campaign. Uh, for the election. And in years past, we typically have slowed down the quarter of that election and then picked back up at the end of the year. I see more homes selling. I see more homes selling in 2024 than 2023. I see it increasing about 18% over this year. So not exactly back to where we were in 2022. However, um, it is at an increase. I see interest rates um, getting lower, but basically staying pretty steady, uh, probably between six and 7% for most of the year. Um, hopefully we really have gotten this soft landing that we've been hoping for. And hopefully the feds will start to reduce interest rates uh, probably by the summer this next year. The US mortgage interest rate is based on the 10 year bond. Uh, pricing. And um, so it's not directly related to the Fed's um, interest rates. However, it is very much related <laughs> at the same time. Um, so as the Fed's lower interest rates, mortgage interest rates should come down as well. And I believe there's going to be a lot more first-time homebuyers. And that's because the millennial generation, which is the largest generation on earth right now, um, they are coming into their beginning of a household uh, time in their life. So between the ages of 26 and 36, that's typically when the millennials are going out on their own. And in that time frame between 26, age 26 and age 36, that's when they are buying a home. Um, and there are so many of those people out in the market. Um, as soon as we get the interest rates to a point where they can rationalize it, um, where it is more affordable for them to buy than it is to rent, then I see a lot more first-time homebuyers out there. 
So if you know someone who is going to be a first time home buyer this next year, there are a lot of mortgage programs that are available to them, not only through the state of Virginia, um, but our loan officers that we recommend have programs that their individual banks offer, that their individual uh, mortgage companies offer, and they can shop around and find the best opportunity. One of the hardest things for a first time home buyer to come up with is the down payment. And we are lucky in the state of Virginia where we have some programs where there is no down payment that is required. Uh, there is some training and some classes and special criteria, some income restrictions and location restrictions, uh, but there are opportunities for them. And then of course, anyone looking to purchase with the VA loan, I'm a veteran, I'm a disabled veteran myself. So I've used my VA uh, to purchase uh, two homes now. Um, and it is a great opportunity for anyone. Um, the beauty also is the streamline refinance. So let's say you purchase your home just this last year. And as soon as interest rates get down about a full percentage point lower than what your mortgage rates is, that's when you want to think about refinancing your home. Now you gotta look at the dollars and cents because there are closing costs associated with refinancing. So you need to make sure you're gonna be recouping those costs and your savings in a reasonable amount of time. But the refinance market is gonna to start to pick back up. I had clients who sold homes and the buyers of those homes had 8% loans. And right now would be an awesome opportunity for them to refinance. So if you're thinking about refinancing or you want to switch banks or anything like that, just let me know. I can refer you to some great people. So I think 2024 is going to be an amazing year. Uh, but one of the big challenges we will be facing is the number of licensed real estate agents is going to start to go down. We have about one and a half million realtors in the nation right now. And not every real estate agent is a realtor. So a realtor is someone who's a member of the National Association of Realtors, and they subscribe to a code of ethics, and we have training, um, and uh, very, um, we, we're self-governing, and it's a great organization. I'm a realtor, and I'm a part of that. About 20% of the licensed real estate agents are probably going to be leaving the business. That's a huge difference. And... In the COVID world, we had a lot of people enter the business as a side hustle. They were bored out of their mind at home. Real estate was doing well. They wanted to get in and do it. And just over a year ago, in about September of 2022, real estate started to become normal again. And by normal, I mean, we actually have to start marketing houses. We actually have to start working on pricing strategies. We actually had to start following up with showings and houses were on the market a little bit longer. As a matter of fact, houses are on the market on average about 45 days right now. So with people getting into the market 2016 through 2021, they were used to putting a sign in the yard and you have 17 offers. They never had the market. They really never had to even work on pricing a home. There are so many things that they haven't been able to do. And now it's hard. Now it's gotten hard. Now they need to perform. Now they need to sell the houses. Now they need that knowledge. They need to know where the market is going, where it has been, what the pricing needs to be. And a lot of them just aren't willing to do that or it's too hard for them. So we're going to see a lot of people leaving the business, which on one hand is a good thing because some people should leave the business. And on another hand, there are some great people out there that if they had just worked harder and trained and applied themselves and had a good mentor, they would do really well. But I wanna let you guys know that my team and I, we are here to stay. I just celebrated completing my 20th year in the industry. I am going to be here for a while. You do not need to worry about me or anyone else on our team leaving the business. And if you or someone you know are now a real estate orphan, as in your real estate agent was awesome and helped you out, but they're leaving the business or they're retiring or something is changing, I'd love to be your surrogate. I'd love to be your adopted real estate agent or anyone on my team would love that. So if you feel like you need to make a move, but you're left out in the cold, where should I turn? Please, I would love that referral. I'd love to take care of you. Um, I may have known your real estate agent and I would make sure you are taken well care. You are well taken care of um, in this market because it's going to be different. It's going to be challenging. 
and it's actually going to be a lot of fun at the same time. So I will have a report out in January on where we finished this last year, because all my numbers are based on the end of November, because we're not done with December yet. Uh, but I will have a little update and I will be comparing 2023 to our last normal year, which was 2019. We'll be looking at everything along those lines. And then I will have more up-to-date market updates for you as we go into the new year. So I hope you and your family have a blessed Christmas. I hope you have a wonderful new year and I'm here for you if you need anything and don't hesitate to reach out and I will be in touch. See you soon. Thank you.